need a sneed. You also need a sneed. So hopefully some of my students are recognizing the famous Dr. Seuss book here. Anyhow, so here's our problem. Trying to get the page to scroll here. There we go. So here's the rest of the problem. Once learned manufacturing is ready to meet your needs for needs and needs, and you can see that needs sell for $55 profit each, and needs sell for $75 a piece in profit. Each need requires the leaves of 0.1 truffle trees and 0.2 hours of labor, and each need requires the leaves of 0.05 truffle trees and 0.4 hours of labor. You have available 50,000 truffle trees and 150,000 hours of labor. What is the maximum profit Wunzler Manufacturing can earn? Okay, so if you know how to do this problem, go ahead and do it now. So pause the video, solve this yourself uh, using Excel, perhaps. If not, go ahead and set up what you could do with the by hand technique. So for example, you should be able to define your variables. You should be able to come up with an objective function. And you should be able to come up with constraint inequalities. So no matter what system we're going to use, whether it's Excel, Wolfram, or by hand, you have to do those three steps. So do that now and then restart the video after you've finished those three steps. Okay, so you're back after uh, you've, you've done your first step, so let's compare. First, variables. I used x to equal the number of sneeds and y to equal the number of sneeds. Next, an objective function. We are going to maximize profit, which is equal to 55 times x, so $55 times the number of sneeds and $75 times the number of sneeds. <coughs> and our constraints. Well, x and y, of course, have to be positive. We cannot manufacture a negative number of sneeds or sneeds. It's actually positive, greater than or equal to zero would be the more correct way to say it. They cannot be negative. And we have a constraint based on the truffle of trees. We can use no more than the 50,000 truffle of trees. So 0.1 is the amount of truffle of tree that each sneed requires, and 0.05 is the amount of each sneed. Likewise, we have our limit of 150,000 hours of total labor. So we can use, uh, we use 0.2 hours of labor for each need and 0.4 for each need. So those are inequalities. Now if you're doing it by hand, that's one method, but now we're going to demonstrate how we could do this using Excel. So here's my spreadsheet on Excel. And I've set up the information already. I haven't done the math yet, but I've set up the information. So, and I want to see your Excel sheets with some labels. Don't just put things in to make, make the answer magically happen, because if the problem were to change and I asked a different question, if you have a well set up Excel sheet, it becomes much easier to respond to changes in conditions. So I labeled sneeds and sneeds here, and this number here indicates that these boxes are going to have the number of sneeds and sneeds. I can't keep saying them over and over, but you get the idea. So if I manufacture five of those, it would go a five in this box right here. The profit is $55 per one of those and $75 for one of those. It uses 0.1 truffle trees and 0.2 hours of labor. Likewise with Schneeds, the number will go here. The profit per Schneed is here. Truffle tree usage is here and labor is here. And down here I put my limits. So I should probably label that as limits or constraints. And I can't use any more than this. <clears throat> so the first thing I need to do is come up with an equation for total profit. I'm going to put that here in the dollar column. And total profit is going to be equal to, and now I'm going to construct an equation, the number of truffle trees times profit per, per one of those, plus the number of these times the number of those. Enter. OK, so this value, nothing's going on. Let's just imagine I made eight of these. Okay, my equation isn't working, so I'm going to have to go, oh no, it is working, so there we go. Eight of these and three of those, it made $665 total profit if that happened to be the situation. Now let me go back over here. I'm going to try and copy this over, so I want to use a dollar sign in front of the B and dollar sign in front of the other B over here. The reason for that is that freezes those. They are no longer going to move when I copy it. That will be self-explained kind of clear when I do it here in just a second. So now rather than having to construct to create the rest of these, I can just copy this over, and I'm going to get the equations that I need. B2 times D2, so 8 in this case, if it happened to be 8, times 0.1 truffle trees, and 3 times 0.05, so I've got 0.95 truffle tree usage, if this happened to be my combination here. 
And likewise, it's calculated the amount of labor I've used here. So let's just play around with this a bit. Let's say I made, made 100 needs and 200 needs. I would have a profit of 20,500. I would have used 20 truffle trees and 100 hours of labor. So clearly I can use a lot more because I'm nowhere near my limit. Now we could guess all day until we find what we think is the best answer. <clears throat> but instead, under data, I have something called the solver. If you don't have this initially, you click the toolbar on the top of a Mac and go to add-ins and add it in. You have a slightly different way of doing it if you're not on a Mac. So let's go ahead and use the solver. Now the solver has a couple of parameters I need to fill in. Objective function. This is whatever you're trying to maximize or minimize. So normally when you start the solver, it will be all empty. So let's see, is there an easy way to clear this out? Reset all. Okay. Okay, so we'll just start over. Objective function is now in the wrong place. My objective function is here. Go down and just click on this box. I guess I got it. We want to maximize these variables here, B2 to B3. Now I need to add the constraint. And the way I like to do the constraint, especially when the problems become larger, this will become efficient, is I'm going to just copy both of these in, less than or equal to both of these, and we'll do them one at a time. So it'll say D4 is less than D5, and D4 is also less than or equal to D5. So it'll do both of those at once. I don't have to add them in individually. And now I simply click the solve button, and it jumps around. There's a little icon at the bottom of my computer. It says it solved it, and it's giving me the number of needs and the number of needs. Now, that might not be the best answer we could get. Let's say OK, but I'm going to solve it again, and I'm going to add another constraint. And I should have actually changed this to uh, linear programming, but it really didn't matter. It got an answer anyway. So I'm going to add another constraint. This wasn't working the other day, so we'll see if this works on Macs in general. It's the integer. So we're going to try and make those not be fractional answers. Since that's linear programming, solve. There we go. So now it's going to round one up and one down, still within its constraints. And we get the actual best whole number answer to this problem. So this is another example of how we can do optimization using Excel. And to be honest, two by two problems are easy to do by hand, but we're going to shortly be doing problems with many more variables and they're really not practical to do by hand. You have to use some technology and Excel is probably our best method. So I hope this has been beneficial. This shows how it works on a Mac if you choose to use a Mac. The other videos are all made on, on uh, PC computers. So it's a slightly different look, but not really that different.